Today's cup of coffee comes from Chris Q, who is a very close friend to our dear Joe Schmo. Chris writes, I have known Joe pretty much all my life. We grew up together and had many firsts. First roommate, first apartment out of state, first time trying certain things that may or may not enhance your mood, first group fist fight, first suspension from school, etc. At age 21, Joe got a killer job offer from Tulsa, Oklahoma. We were all 21. We grew up together in Colorado Springs and were anxious to get out of state and really fly the coop. In what better situation than with your best friend? I recall it was Joe's first real professional job offer. Legit. He was going to manage and take over business operations for a call center in which the owner was the previous GM at our old job. First chance we got, we were on the road to Tulsa, which I will refer to moving forward as to hell. When we first got there, we didn't have any furniture, and aside of cookware, we knew we needed to go back and get our belongings later. My wife, myself, and Joe were roommates. My wife and I took the master bedroom in our new apartment, while Joe had the second bedroom. We had a tag-along friend who stayed in the living room. One night, my wife and I finished up a bonding session, if you know what I mean. We were laying there when we heard a slam come from the hallway. The slam was followed by three bangs. I ran to the master bedroom door and opened it. I could see down the hall that Joe's bedroom on the left side had the door closed. My first thought that was Joe was in trouble, so I started down the hall watching Joe's door. On the right side of the hallway and across from Joe's room, there was a common bathroom. I stopped after a few steps as I realized the bangs didn't come from Joe's door, but from the bathroom door across the hall from his room. Joe hastily opened the door to his room and looked out. He saw me sitting in the hallway, naked because of my bonding session. For your information, Joe sleeps in the buff. I'm telling you to embarrass him. I recall Joe said, Yo, bro, are you okay? I said, Yes, are you okay? Here are two dudes standing bare-ass naked asking each other if they were okay. You would think it would be awkward, but in fact, it didn't matter. It was cold, very cold. Suddenly, there were three more extremely loud bangs, so loud they literally shook the bathroom door right in front of my eyes. Joe called for our friend Clint because it was obvious he was in there and needed help. Clint came from the living room and said, What the F is going on and why are you freaks naked? Joe and I looked at each other as three more hard slams came from the bathroom door. We thought for sure there would be a crack in the door somewhere. With all three guys in the hallway, my wife yelling in the bedroom, and a slammed bathroom door shaking from three consistent bangs, I told Joe, get your gun, because he is now and has always been a 2A guy. He went into his room, and I heard him by his bed when suddenly his door slammed and started banging. I ran to his door, and as I passed the bathroom, realized it was as cold as a freezer. I was more scared than I have ever been. I opened his door, and Joe was by his bed with a 9mm Israeli model B Uzi. I told you he was a gun freak. Joe looked at me and said, I have something I should probably tell you. A gun isn't going to stop this from happening. I said, WTF are you talking about? Then the bathroom door opened, and we both looked at it as it slammed shut. Hard. Really hard. Three consistent bangs, and it sounded like someone exhaled. I thought my heart was going to pound out of my chest. We all slept in the living room that night, except for Clint. He left and never came back. Although I had heard some ghost stories from Joe before, I had never felt anything like this. It was terrifying. I thought there was an explanation to what Joe had mentioned only in passing previously. It was at this time that I really believed him, and I knew it wasn't just an imagination thing. I was there. We were all there. I feel for Joe. After a couple of months, my wife and I moved out. We moved to Atlanta, actually. If you want to know real fear, let Joe hang out with you for one week or so. You will feel fear like you have never felt. It isn't him directly. It's whatever the fuck that has plagued him for as long as I have known him. 
Joe is by far one of the nicest, coolest, most generous dudes, and definitely the smartest person I know. And I will never room with him again unless it is not an option. The only other thing I recall vividly about that night is as we were scared to death in the living room and my wife was saying she really wanted to leave and I told her, no, Joe is our best friend and we are in this together and I'm not leaving him, is after that we lay silent, terrified. Joe looked over at me with a grin and said, I told you so. And I said, tell me what? And he smiled and said, I always told you mine was bigger. The tension in the air broke immediately, and we all laughed for about 20 minutes. It was the best laugh I have ever had, and it came when it was really needed. I laughed until I lost my breath, actually. Joe, the fucking comedian. A few hours later, Joe was asleep, I think. He was breathing like he was. My wife was asleep, and I heard the bathroom door open, and then what sounded like a few steps. I never told anyone about that. And this is the first time I have spoken about that night since then. I will never forget that night. I hope you enjoyed my horrible experience and the perspective about this night in hell. It took me a while because of how this night made me feel. There were other experiences as well, but I won't talk about them. I have to go to church now to get rid of this creepy feeling that I haven't felt in a while. I hate this experience, but love my brother for life. Chris Q. Chris, thank you so much for sharing that. And that must have truly been a horrifying experience. And Joe has explained some of the things that he's been through. And I'm still urging him to seek some kind of help from somebody that can get whatever this entity. It's obviously demonic. I can't see that it's helping him in any way. So that means if it's not of the side of God, then it's from the other side. Because there's only two sides in this war, and there is no, isn't there? And so, you know, and, and all of us as a group, we need to pray for Joe that God will send someone in his life to deliver him from whatever this entity is, to break whatever tie it has on him, to him, whatever. And um, that's a terrifying thing to have to live with that since since childhood. And uh, Joe, you're very beloved. And we're so glad to have you on our tiny little ship. And uh, if there's anything that we can do, I mean, hey, dude, you've got my number. And you, you, you know that if you call, you know, I'm going to be there. Chris is going to be there. There's no one on our little crew that if you called them and said you needed help, that we wouldn't do whatever we could to try to help you. And what we can do to help you right now is pray. So if anyone has had other supernatural paranormal experiences, experiences with UFOs and aliens, uh, cryptids, you know, the Bigfoot, whatever. I'm still working on as far as the siren head and uh, as far as manifesting things. That will be an upcoming video. If you've had experiences with alternate realities, with or without substances, or any other thing that you would like to share with us, please send that uh, those emails to cupofcoffeewithscream at gmail.com. And Chris, thank you again. And Joe, God bless you, honey. And you all have a beautiful, blessed day.